in the 1950s, a series of episodes with very high air pollution impacts in communities led us to believe that people were dying on high air pollution days or weeks, and that led to an understanding of there's probably more going on than just these lung effects. The lung effects are real, that people, for example, do have uh, more risk of, a, uh, of an asthma attack if they have asthma on a day with higher air pollution concentrations. But we've also learned that there's clearly an effect of air pollution on the cardiovascular system, and we're learning more about other systems as well. When a day has higher, say, particulate matter air pollution concentrations, uh, the blood pressure will be a little higher, um, the sympathetic nervous system will be firing a little more, blood pressure will go up, heart rate will go up. There's something about air pollution that makes those, uh, those um, plaques in the coronary arteries or in the carotid arteries become um, more inflamed, more vulnerable to triggering a heart attack and stroke on a high air pollution day. We now know that, uh, in, that living in a place with higher air pollution concentrations accelerates the rate of atherosclerosis, this underlying process that leads to heart attacks and strokes. Obviously, what we're seeing in the U.S. hasn't exactly been paralleled around the world. In uh, rapidly industrializing countries, uh, actually air pollution concentrations have risen dramatically in the last 10 years. In some places, there's some idea that, that might be, we might be turning the corner a little bit, but in places like in India and, uh, and in other uh, rapidly industrializing countries, the uh, levels of air pollution haven't yet begun to turn around and still seem to be increasing. In uh, China, levels have been extremely high for some time, and we're hopeful that with a reduction of reliance on coal burning, um, that we'll, we'll see some improvements. As we've reduced uh, concentrations of air pollutants in the United States, uh, PM 2.5, oxides of nitrogen, uh, that we've improved health. And there's good evidence that these reductions have resulted in an improvement of health. Uh, we know <clears throat> that these lower concentrations are good. We don't know if we've gotten as clean as we need to, and there's probably still, almost certainly still room for improvement in air quality. There's still bad air days, and there's still some parts of the country that aren't in compliance with federal regulations. And we don't really know yet how clean we need to go. We still know there's more pollution going on, even in clean areas um, on dirty days, and there should be. But what we're learning is that these air pollution health effects appear to lead to, the, uh, to chronic processes uh, over the lifespan. So just as uh, throughout adulthood, living in more polluted areas seems to promote atherosclerosis, this hardening of the artery, the, uh, the risk factors for, uh, for heart attack and stroke. We're also worried about exposures in, in childhood and exposures even in, in utero about air pollutant exposures and whether those can cause things like more high blood pressure in childhood, uh, uh, more risk of other chronic diseases over the course of the lifespan. So, so uh, thinking about air pollution, thinking about those risks is really an issue across the entire lifespan. Of course, pregnant women are concerned about many things and their effects on the developing fetus, the child growing within them. I think exposures to air pollution can be part of that mix of things that they need to be concerned upon. Uh, recent data showing that um, uh, women with higher air pollution exposures during pregnancy had effects on the child's blood pressures in the future and other health effects on the children mean that it's something people need to be thinking about during pregnancy just as they are later in life. As we're learning more about these air pollution health effects and we're learning about the, how air pollution seems to trigger these uh, chronic diseases, inflammatory processes in the body, we've learned that, that even uh, it seems to accelerate processes of cognitive decline in the elderly and accelerate other chronic diseases. We're still learning more about this, but there's reason to be concerned.